I'm going to try to solve a dilemma all of us users of Lightroom and Photoshop have had. Should you denoise first or should you sharpen first? I did some testing and I think I have some answers for us. Sharpening a denoise, which to do first, coming up. I'm Terry Vanner, I'm a professional photographer, and today I'm gonna to try to solve a question I get a lot. What should you do first? Should you sharpen first or should you denoise first? Now the working theory is that if you sharpen first, then you're possibly creating more noise. If you denoise first, you might be softening the image so and not be able to get all that sharpness back. Now I've had several emails on this exact question, which process should be done first? Now, if you want to follow along and work on the same image or images that I'm working on, you can go to imageolight.com and go to the free downloads tab and the images should be right there. So you can open them up and work alongside of me. All right, so let's open up Lightroom Classic and see what I found out. All right, we're in Lightroom Classic and here's an image I have. Now, if we look at the details over here, we can see that this was shot at 6400. So there's going to be plenty of noise to work with in this. So let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit. And right now we're at 250%. Let's go to 200% here. A little bit of consistency. And we can see the noise that we have here. We have noise inside the feathers as well. So one of the things you want to strive for is have an originally sharp image. And one of the ways I like to tell when I'm shooting birds is, is are the little bumps around the eyes, is that defined? Can you see those? And, and in this case, obviously we can. There's a lot of noise going on, but we know that this image is sharp and it's sharp right on the eye, which is what we're looking for. So now let's go into develop module. And the first thing we're gonna do is create some virtual copies. So let's go ahead and right click and create a virtual copy. And let's do it again. And we're gonna create a virtual copy. So now we have, you can see down here, we have two additional virtual copies. What we'll do is we're gonna label these. The first one we're gonna label as yellow and one we're gonna label as blue. So we've got yellow or original, blue and yellow. So let's go ahead and open up blue and let's go and do a little bit of work on our images here and figure out how we're gonna do this. So the first thing I like to do in this case is let's do sharpening first. So now what we're gonna do in sharpening is I always like to take my amount and slide it up to about 90%. Now you can go you know, quite a bit higher, but let's just do 90 and, and to make matters simple, we can just click on this and then just dial in that number of 90. Okay, so that brings us to the maximum sharpness we wanna do on this particular image. And then I like to slide these, all these sliders over to the left. And then I hold down the option key and I go to radius and I start sliding this over. And I start looking to see when I start getting details around this eye. So let's look at that again. So when we've got good detail around the eye, then I know that I've gone far. I don't want to go too far. If you go too far, then everything starts getting super gritty. So you kind of have to make a decision and we'll just leave this at 1.6. Okay, so 1.6 on the radius. Same thing with the detail. Let's go ahead and hold the option key down and slide this over. All right, we're starting to get, you can kind of see what happens here when you slide this over right here at zero. And as you start sliding over, we start getting more detail around the eye, but watch the top of the head. If we go too far, then it starts kind of sharpening this area here and sharpening the noise. And we don't really want that. So let's go ahead and find a kind of a happy medium that we like. And let's just go to 41. And then our masking, masking basically tells Lightroom, what's the area that you really want to fo uh, focus on here to sharpen. We hold down the masking, uh, the option key, click masking, and then start sliding this over. Now, if we went all the way over, you could see that only the white areas are gonna be sharpened. So that would not re really be enough to sharpen this image. So we wanna sharpen the birds, feathers, and everything as much as we can. We wanna eliminate what we can in the background, like the dark areas, that's not gonna be sharpened, but we wanna find a happy medium. So I think here is about right. So if we look at these numbers over here, let's just to, to keep these consistent, let's go ahead and write these down. So we've got 90, 
we've got 1.6, we've got 41, and we have 55. Now, these numbers are not something you can plug into your images and just, you know, happy-go-lucky, do them all the same way. This is all specific to each image as what you're trying to work on. So since we're working on the same image, all these numbers are going to be the same. So we've sharpened this. We can see the difference. Let me turn that off and on. You can really tell around the eye what we've done in the sharpening. Okay. We've done nothing else to this image, by the way. I mean, there's no shadow lifting or any of the tones or anything like that. That's going to be something you can do on your own. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go into denoise. And denoise is a function that Lightroom comes up with, and it will enhance the entire image and create us a DNG. So we can see here, when we pull it off the side, we have our amount down to zero. All that noise is present. All the noise in the bird's feathers, all the noise in the background. So I like to slide this slider up, and I treat this kind of like I would ISO. I don't increase the ISO any more than I need to to get the image I'm, I'm looking for. Same with this denoise slider. I don't want to slide this up any farther than I need to to really correct the amount of noise that's really bothering me. Now, there can be some noise in an image, obviously, and that's okay, but you want to get rid of the stuff that really uh, stands out and makes the image uncomfortable to look at. So as I'm sliding this over, I can look close here. Need to go a little bit farther. So I think around 63% is gonna be good. So let's go ahead and hit enhance, and we're gonna let Lightroom create a DNG file for us. And DNG, of course, is Adobe's way of creating a raw image. So uh, that's something that uh, Lightroom does. It's gonna create a whole new image for us, which is fine. We don't, it, it, this one actually would take up more space in your, in your catalog. So it's an additional image, not like the virtual copies, which are basically don't take up hardly any space in your catalog. All right, let's take a look, see what we've done. So there we have our, our finished picture. So we've got, let's compare it. And we'll do a side by side from our original to our one that's been fixed. And you can see down here, this is blue. So that means that's the one that's been fixed. And you can see the difference of, obviously, look at all this noise back here. This is all eliminated. We've got pretty good sharpness around the eyes here. The feathers look good. So that did a pretty good job, I think. So let's just take it another step further and do yet another version of it. Let's go back to our original. And remember, we did this virtual copy. Nothing's been done to this yet. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we'll go into develop module. And instead of sharpening, we're not going to do any sharpening at all. We're going to denoise first. So let's denoise first. Now, one of the things when you're working with denoise is how much do we want to do we want to denoise? Now, if we don't sharpen first, then we're not creating more noise, right? We, maybe less, right? So this number can't be just plugged in. Uh, on its own. We got to plug it in based on what looks best. So let's slide this back a little bit. So that looks pretty good. So this one turns out to be 50 in terms of our denoise. So let's go ahead and hit enhance and that'll soften some of the denoise around the image. It's going to take the, some of the denoise. It's actually going to take noise out of the background, which is great. And it's also going to take some of the noise out of the bird. Well, sharpening inside Lightroom Classic or Photoshop should be part of your workflow. Do you know how to create razor sharp images in the first place? If you'd like to learn, check out my ebook, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. It's sold exclusively on my website and you'll find it under the digital products page. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you like, you can get started getting razor sharp images out of the camera. So check out that ebook. All right, so now we have our DNG that, that Lightroom created after it was denoised. And then we've got a DNG here where we denoise first, but we haven't gone in and sharpened it yet. So let's go ahead and click on here and we'll go into develop module and we'll do our sharpening. 
So we take our sharpening and we can make this similar. Let's go ahead and bring this up to 90. And 1.6 on our radius. And if we want to check that, we can hold this down and see. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. And then our detail is 41. Let's go ahead and screw that up. Let's, let's punch it in. That way we're consistent. And then masking, same thing, 55. All right, so now we've sharpened this. So this one we sharpened second. So let's go in and take a look at our images. We got this one here where we sharpened first and this one here where we sharpened second. So let's take a look at those. We'll zoom those up. The denoise looks good. The sharpening looks good. So my determination between these two is it doesn't matter. Do denoise first or do sharpening first? As long as you're keeping consistent, you're not going to have an issue. So you, it is, there is some, some uh, decisions you have to make when you're doing your sharpening and denoising inside of Lightroom Classic, right? You're going to have to decide how much uh, on the sharpening, how much the radius is, the detail. Those are decisions you need to make in terms of sharpening. But same with denoise, right? You have to decide how much denoise do I want? You put in more denoise, you start softening more of the image. But you can see here by these two, right side by side, there's not a difference between which way we did it. So there is nothing that you need to concern yourself with. Do the pattern that you like best. I think Lightroom, when you put things together in most of the develop process, you go from the top down and work your way through. And so when you're going from the top down, um, sharpening comes first. So go ahead and do sharpening first. It doesn't matter in the end result. Is this the best way to do sharpening and denoise? I think we can do a little bit better. So let's try this. We're going to go into Photoshop and see if we can make a little bit better job of this. Let's go to our original and we're going to move this over into, light, uh, into Photoshop. If you're enjoying this content, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video is released. I always read and respond to all the comments, so feel free to leave a question or suggestion in the comment section. I love to hear from you. Your ideas often inspire future videos, so keep them coming. You can also reach out to me via email directly at terry at imagelight.com and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll put you on my mailing list and I'll let you know the videos that I released that way. All right, we're inside Photoshop. I'm just going to do a new duplicate layer. And now we're going to take this in and go into Topaz Sharpen AI. Now Topaz is a program you have to pay separately for. If this is something you guys want to learn about how Topaz works in all of its detail, let me know and I'll, uh, I can do a video on that if you like. But let me just let me know in the comments. So we're going to do a we'll bring this up to I don't like to do any noise reduction on when I'm doing my sharpening. I do that separately. So we'll bring this up to say 68 percent. Let's go ahead and zoom up here and see what we like here. Let's go up to 200 percent. All right, that's quite a bit sharpener around the eye. Again, I'm looking for those little bumps around the eyes. Let's go ahead and apply. Let Topaz do its thing. What Topaz does is it uses AI, right? So it's saying, oh, you probably just want to sharpen the bird, right? And so it knows where the bird is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over here to any of the object selection tools, and we're going to pull this down here to cloud, and I'm going to do select subject. And let it select the subject. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask while that's selected. And you can see that it created a layer mask around that selection, right? So now what we've done is we've created a layer mask that is revealing only the sharpening on the bird, not on the background. All right, so this now we've sharpened this. We've created a mask so that we're only sharpening just the bird and not the rest of the image. So let's go ahead and come in here and we're going to make a new layer. We'll just drag it down to the little plus sign, make a new layer. And this one, we're just going to delete the, this 
we'll delete that layer mask for now. Now we're going to go in and do some denoise. So let's go up to filter and we'll go to the Topaz denoise. Totally separate program. Uh, we're dealing with just the noise here. We're not enhancing any of the sharpness in my sliders. You kind of get this to a point where you like it and we hit apply. All right, so now we've got denoise going. You can see the difference here. When we turn this off, we've lost a lot of the denoise on the bird itself. I mean, a lot of the sharpness on the bird itself because we've denoised and softened everything, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and just add it up here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Command I and invert that. So now what we're doing is we're separating on this side, all this white area is letting the denoise go through to the background, but not on the bird itself. And so this is sharpening for the bird and this is denoising for just the background. Now, if we want to make some changes to this, like let's say there does appear to be some noise in these feathers, right? If we want to make some changes to this, all we have to do is work on the mask. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our brush, brush and we're gonna paint it 20%, and we're just gonna paint in with white some of that denoise that went on, right? So we're gonna denoise this with a tip of a brush. So we're just gonna add a little bit at a time and let it just paint over some of these areas that we wanna have, take out some of the noise off the bird itself. And maybe we wanna do more, so we just do more passes down here and start creating a, you know, a heavier layer when it comes to the denoise. And now we've got a super sharp bird face. We've got some softening here. Let's look, look at the comparison. So again, we ended up, we started with our original. We did sharpening on one layer, denoise on the other. We did a mask to make sure that those images were not affecting other parts. And then we also did a little bit of brushing with the brush to actually add in a little bit of denoise on part of the bird so as not to uh, destroy that. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to compare the Photoshop version of our sharpening and denoise with our Lightroom version of sharpening and denoise. And I can see right off the top that the sharpening is a little better here in, in our Photoshop version. The denoise is very similar. We've softened areas down here on the bird. Uh, this is a little softer than I'd like on the bird here. Um, starts to take a little bit of detail away from the feathers. The denoise in the background, they look the same. That's great. Colors look the same. I just think the sharpening here looks a little bit better. Now, it's not to say you need to go and get topaz and start doing your sharpening that way. That's just another level that you can get to. But if you're inside a Lightroom, what we've determined is it doesn't matter where you want to start. If you want to start with sharpening and then denoise or denoise and then sharpening inside a Lightroom, it doesn't matter. All right. See you next time.